Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And welcome to World Congress, a teaching session of the Light for All Nations Mission, designed to bring you the Word of God for life transformation. The Bible says, And they came unto him that they might hear the Word of God and be healed of their infirmities. Healing is included in every form of help that God gives to those who believe in him. Today's World Congress, we shall be taking the theme Faith and Righteousness. Faith and Righteousness. It is about looking at the relationship between faith in God and what God calls righteousness. What is that believer's righteousness? What does God mean when he says righteousness? The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Men strive to be righteous. People try to be righteous. Some, even at that, will tell you, no one is righteous. I'm not righteous. You are not righteous. But we know that without righteousness, you are not already, you are, you are, you are already doomed as far as God is concerned. So how can we be righteous? How can we say we are righteous? Many things have tried to answer that question. That question, as it were, much more than any other thing is religion. Whether it's religion in terms of Christian religion, traditional religion, and other kind of religions that we know about. But this morning, we want to understand the kind of righteousness that God gives and how it is what makes you indeed righteous. The Bible tells us in the book of John, I think chapter 16 or so, it says, when the Holy Spirit shall come, he will teach you all truth. John chapter 14, actually. He will teach you all truth. He will bring you to know and convict you of what sin is, what righteousness is, and what judgment is. And so what is this righteousness? That is what we want to look at this morning. Romans chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. The Bible says, Because they disregarded the righteousness from God and attempted to establish their own righteousness. So you see, the righteousness from God and our own righteousness. God's righteousness and man's righteousness. They have not submitted themselves to God's righteousness because man have established his own righteousness he does not want to submit to God's own righteousness we try to define our own righteousness without trying to find out from God what is righteousness and like I said religion does that more than any other factor for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believe Christ is the end of the law. I'm going to tell us what I mean by, or what the scripture is talking about, righteousness and the law. For righteousness to everyone who believes. Romans 1, verse, Romans 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in the gospel... The righteousness of God is revealed. In the gospel, what God calls righteousness is what? Is revealed. And it is all by faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Now, faith generally means believing and having confidence about something that is unseen. At the moment. Now, let me assume that I want to do something. I want to build a house. I have the plan of the house I want to build. And because I have money and I have enough resources and human resources and material resources, I believe I will build that house. I believe because I have not yet built it. Nobody believes what he is already seeing. You believe to ex you believe to see. If you see to believe, that is not belief. Believing has to do with acknowledging something that cannot be seen as true. 
For example, I believe that you will help me. You have not yet helped me, but I believe you will help me. So at the end of the day, when you help me, my belief has paid off. So faith, generally speaking, is having confidence in something that has not yet happened, as it were. It can be motivated by your own personal qualities. Like I said, I believe in myself. I believe I can do it. I believe I can do it. You have not done it here, but you believe you can do it. You're, so you are believing in your, your qualities, your, your, your abilities, your personality, your material, what you have. Or you are believing someone, oh, I'm going to take care of your school fees from primary to university, to any level. You have not done, yet done it. So you say, thank you by faith. Oh, thank you very much. God bless you. The person has not yet given you anything. But he said, I am going to do it. And based on his promise, you are confident because you trust him. Or it can be on anything. You are trusting the chair you are sitting on that it will not give way for you to fall. And so you go ahead to see. Because if you don't have faith that that chair will carry you, you will not sit. If you have faith that the chair will not carry you, you will not even sit. So you see, faith can be positive, can be negative. I don't believe that this food will give me any nutrient. I believe that this food will give me nutrient. In fact, even the food you eat, you eat it by faith because they told you that there are nutrients in the food. And if you eat this food, it will give you this nutrient. It will give you, if you want your kidneys to be good, take this, take that, take that. If you want this, take this, take that, take that. The doctors will give you some, some things they call tablets or syrup or whatever, and they say you should take it, they will inject something into your stream, bloodstream, you are not even fighting arguing with them because you believe in what they have said, that it will be as they have said. So here faith is trusting someone or yourself or anything to give or to produce what you expect. That's why the King James will say faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. So that is what faith generally can be described as. But in this lesson, we are looking at faith as it had to do with God. Trust and absolute confidence in God through the revelation of the gospel. In other words, I believe and I trust God on his person and on his word according to the revelation of his word as written or given in the gospel. He says, for the gospel, for in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. It starts with faith, it ends with faith. Even our relationship with God is purely by what? By faith. The scriptures, the gospel we hear tells us about God. There are so many ideas about God all over the world. But the gospel tells us about God and we believe the concept of God according to the gospel. Yes, there are so many a, a concept of God as given in the Bible generally by Moses, by various people in the scriptures. But Jesus Christ, who is the center of the gospel, revealed him through his gospel. He said, no one has seen God at any time, but the Son of God who sits at his right hand, he has revealed him unto us. And so the gospel is centered on the revelation of God as given by Jesus Christ. Excuse me. Hallelujah. So having said that, in this lesson, when we mention faith, or uh, an, uh, his relationship with righteousness, we talk about faith as given by God, as our confidence in God, our trust in God, our reliance in God, our total dependence on God. Now, what is righteousness? Now, that, like we have read, you see, having despised the righteousness that is from God, they created their own righteousness. So there are different kinds of definitions for righteousness in the eyes of men. Generally speaking, by the dictionary definition, righteousness is all about right living according to a set moral principle. Righteousness can also be adhering to moral principles or the quality of being morally right, or being justifiable. So if there are rules and regulations, and I follow those rules and regulations, 
I am accounted to be what? Righteous. Hallelujah. This implies that there are moral and ethical rules or laws or principles which have to be lived by to be counted as what? Righteous. And these so-called right things or rules could be evil. For example, somebody has decided that he has sent you, my law is that we are going to go to that town and kill everybody who does not belong to our group. And then if you go there and do not kill those people, they say you are not righteous because you didn't do what the rule said. But killing people, is it right? Oh, you have to take some bomb into your body and go to where people are gathered and detonate the bomb so that you and everybody there you will die and, and then you have done the right thing. You have done the right thing. And people clap hands for you. Now, detonating bomb and killing everybody, is it good? You see that what we call righteousness is by human standard could actually be evil. You are a governor, you are a minister, or you are a government functionary in charge of a particular thing. Yes, what is motivating the things you do? Let's say you, you want to demolish houses, and then you say we must do, follow the original plan of this town. Every house that doesn't follow the original plan must be demolished. But right inside of your heart, your real reason for the demolition is not because you want to follow what the, is in the original plan. It is because there are people you don't like, you want to bring them down. And so in the eyes of men, you are following the rules as given in the law. But in the reality, you are not really following the law because there are people who are breaking that same law and you are not implying that law on them. There is a cathedral on that land, you didn't demolish it. There is a mosque on that land, you didn't demolish it. There is one special, the, the president's house is on that land, and you, the minister, cannot demolish the president's house. But every other person's own is brought down. Why? Because of your motive. And if the people living there are all your party members, if you belong to a party, you will not touch those people. No, no, we are those ones. No, no, no. But when they belong to people who you don't like, you want to enforce the law. Now, that law you are enforcing to you, to the eyes of men, you are doing the right thing. But in the reality, is it right? Is it right? So you see, human righteousness are guarded by selfishness. Human righteousness are guarded by, by, by personal ambition, selfish ambition. You do things that seemingly look right, but they are evil in the right context. That is why I said, I say, way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are ways of destruction. The laws you are making, are they righteous laws? When you make the laws and expect everybody to follow that law, is that law a righteous law? It is only God's law that could be righteous. And what is God's law? We're going to find out. When he ask people what are God's laws, he says, oh, God gave Moses some laws. And that is the law God has given to everyone. Now, you see, when Jesus Christ will say, it is written, it was said by Moses, but this is what I say. Meaning that most of those things you call the laws, we are not actually properly represented. That is why even that righteousness that comes by those laws did not help anyone to be righteous before God. And that's why the Bible says that for Christ is the end of those moral codes and principles because they are things that are external. They do not really, really fulfill the righteousness of God. What God calls righteousness? Why will God be the determinant of righteousness? Because he is the one who created all things. He is the one who decides what is right and what is wrong. Not us. Biblically, even Bible, we can see the two kinds of righteousness, like I mentioned earlier. The righteousness that we, in our religious mindset, have created, and the righteousness of God. But most times, because we are so inclined to our religious traditions, we despise God's own righteousness. The Bible says, you err because you don't know the scripture, nor the power of God. And the scripture, they are, even when they are the, 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 the master, the teachers of the scriptures, Jesus said, they don't know the scriptures. Because the scripture is all about Christ. For they are they which spoke concerning me. And Christ is the revelation of God. And God in Christ has shown us what he meant by righteousness. Righteousness by the law is righteousness based on doing what is right or wrong according to stipulated religious rules or regulations that be. Righteousness by faith and righteousness by law. Righteousness by faith is the one that God prescribed. Righteousness by law 
is the one that we prescribe. And righteousness by faith has to do with being declared righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. In the righteousness by the law, you do those things to become righteous. In righteousness by faith, you become righteous to do what God wants. So in religion, we try to do things so that God will accept us. In Christ, God accepts us and uses us to do what he wants. So contrary to many people's opinion and religious views, God's righteousness with regards to keeping the law is biblically clear from the, uh, 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 you know, the, the beginning. God has always shown us what he calls his righteousness. From the first instance we see in the book of Genesis, God's righteousness has always been a matter of believe in me and act based on my move. Not act and hoping that I will accept you based on what you have done. For example, you see that Adam did what was wrong. What was it wrong? God said, do not eat of this tree. Adam disbelieved God. So it was lack of faith that led to unrighteousness. And it is therefore faith that will bring righteousness. He disbelieved God and believed the devil. And that led him to transgress against God's instruction. So you see that Adam lost faith in God and that is what led him to eat the evil tree. His sin was not necessarily what he did. His sin was disbelieving God. Disbelieving God. Unrighteousness. Bible says every unrighteousness is sin. And what is unrighteousness? According to the law, is when you go against what the law has said. What is unrighteousness according to God? When you disbelieve God. So Adam disbelieved God, and that unbelief led him to do what was he did. So what God counted as the sin is not even his eating of the tree. It is his disbelieving him. Once you disbelieve God, you will always be on the wrong path. Now, even if you think you are doing the right thing and it's not founded by your faith in God, that right thing are fairly rags before God. For example, you don't commit fornication. You don't steal. You don't fight. You don't do all the things we call righteousness by human standard. And you feel that because you didn't do that, you are a righteous man. Go to funerals and you see what people say. This man is a nice man, a man of peace, a man of that. The same person they're talking about, so another person talking about him, about him on the negative side. What are we saying? Now that your righteousness, as it were, keeping the rules that we are giving to you by your religious group, because every religion has its own group. In, 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 in some religion, you can marry five wives. In another religion, you can marry only one wife. Another religion, even that some religion, can have diverse opinion. Because it is given by man, they think divergently. And so their rules and regulations are different. You see, that's why in some places, homosexual is the right thing. In another place, homosexual is the wrong thing. What is the right thing? And what is the wrong thing? I've always said that if you want to know the right thing, go to the beginning. If homosexual is the right thing, God wouldn't have made a man and a woman would have made a man and a man, or a woman and a woman. And then, if all the marriages you have seen in the Bible, it has been that a man married a woman. A man married a woman, not a man married a man, or a woman married a woman. Eventually, there was corruption. If something comes out of corruption in our world today, along the line, we co-opt it and call it righteousness. We decide today something that is righteousness last week is now our righteousness this week. Something that is our righteousness last month or last year, is now unrighteous this, this time. You see, there are so many things that we use, we try to twist certain words to make them right. But they are, are they right according to God? Are they projected through faith? Are they founded by faith? Or are they founded by what you think? Are you being carnal? Say, so walk in the spirit and you will do what God wants. It is Working in the Spirit is having faith in God. Having faith in God starts by knowing who He is, understanding who He is, so that His Spirit guides you to do what He wants. So, sin is not necessarily the act that you did, but what led to the act is what can we count as sin. This person, even in the human laws, so somebody is killed, 
The next question is, how was he killed? Oh, he was killed by self-defense. He was killed by premeditated malicious thought. He was killed by mistake. He didn't know. He was just throwing something and it fell on the person. The same act was done, but the motivations are different. So the judgment comes according to the motivation. What God wants us to do is to be motivated by faith. That's why the Bible says anything not done by faith is sin. Anything not done by faith is sin. So the righteousness of God is by faith. And this faith is by reliance and complete dependence on God, where he becomes the one that moves you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Even in Hebrews chapter 11, you can see the story of many people from Adam to Moses who were counted righteous, not necessarily because of what they did, but because of what moved them to do what they did. And that is God working in you both to do and to act. God working in you and you're cooperating with God is founded on faith or is what we can define also as faith in God. For example, we see that Noah was declared righteous because he was a man of faith. The Bible says, by faith Noah, by faith Enoch, by faith uh, Abel. Abel was not a righteous man because he offered nice offering to God. He was a righteous man because he acted by faith. Hallelujah. Because he acted by faith, what he did pleased God. When you act by faith, you will always please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, you can never be a righteous person. And when I say faith, I don't mean your religious faith. I don't mean your human faith. I mean faith that is based on the revelation of God's word to your spirit. As inscribed in the gospel, because the Bible says that the righteousness of God is being revealed in the gospel from faith to faith. What God desires of you is revealed. When Jesus Christ says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He didn't say unrighteousness, but his righteousness. God's righteousness is founded on what faith. So I seek the kingdom of God based on the revelation of God's word in my spirit through his gospel. And that is what is called his righteousness. I act by faith. Whatever comes out of it is righteousness. Hallelujah. So our righteousness is a product of faith. Not a, our, our, our faith is not a product of our righteousness. We are not called God's people because we do what people say is right. We are God's people because we do things by God. The Bible says, and Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, gave instructions to his disciples. Abraham, the Bible said about him, in Romans chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, say, what shall we say then about our father Abraham as pertaining to the flesh? For if Abraham was made righteous by works or by the things he did, he might be proud of himself, but not before God. For what was said in the scripture, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Hallelujah. His faith is counted what? For righteousness. If I do something and you call me righteous, then that righteousness is my reward for the good thing I have done. Therefore, I can boast about my righteousness. I am a good man. I give tithes. I give offering. I do this one. I support the poor. I help the needy. I, I, when I see widows, I help them. I clothe the people. I do this. I do that. I do all these things. Wonderful things. But they are filthy right before God because they are not motivated by God. You are doing those things because you want God to see those things and accept you. He said, may God forgive all his sins and remember all his good works and receive his soul. So God is going to receive my soul because of the good things that I have done. God does not look at the good things that you have done. He looks at what motivated the good things that you have done. Hallelujah. You rescue somebody from trouble. Oh, you have done right. Oh, this man, I owe you my life. You rescued me from trouble. But why did I rescue you? Because I know that there's something you do for me. And I want you to be indebted to me so that when I tell you to do that thing, you re I will always remind you, remember what I did for you. Remember what I did for you. You see that that's my righteousness 
that thing that I have done, in the eyes of men that may look right, is more of bondage. Bondage. A young lady is, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, I cannot live without you. The truth is not because you cannot live without him. The truth is that the things that he, you, you benefit from him, you cannot live without those things. And so you try to do nice things to him so that you can get those things in return. Once those things are no longer there, let us see whether you do it again. And even if you are doing it, you are hoping that maybe things will turn around soon. And if it didn't turn around soon, you back out. What does it mean? It means that your righteousness is not of God. Whatever thing that is not done by faith is sin. In other words, I can even give you money, build house for you, make a, donate deep things to you, and that my act before God is sinful because they are not motivated by faith. They are motivated by my selfish gain. I am an MP. I am a senator. I am a House of Rep member. I give scholarship in my community. I give widows bags of rice every Christmas and December, uh, uh, New Year. I try to renovate school compound. I try to make the roads. Yes, there are good acts. But what, are, what is the motivation for those things? Why are you doing those things? Are you doing it just because you want me to vote for you in the next election? Can you do it ordinarily without nothing? Because you don't want anything. Can you simply give me money without me voting for you? <laughs> can, can, can you just do something without seeking for elective position? Oh, I will, I will do this. I will give this. I will buy a car. I will do, all these things you are doing, they are nice. People are enjoying them. Oh, they are happy. The hospital is well built. Everything is nice. But would you have done it if not for what you want to gain? Would you have done it if not for what you want to gain? The kind, of, the kind of respect and honor and dignity you want the society to give to you. Once those things are not given, do you know me? Do you know that I was the one who did this? I was the one who did that? Uh, you see? That is why the Bible says our righteousness are like feeding at your God. Not that God cannot motivate one to do all those things. God can motivate you. When you do it based on the grace of God, Paul say, I excel more than they are, but yet not I. It is the grace of God that worketh in me. For it is God that works in me to do the right thing. And when I do those things that is motivated by God, I do not receive the encomiums. I give the glory to God. Hallelujah. I praise God from whom all blessings flow. Do you know that I can use the grace of God without faith to do miracles, signs, and wonders only to glorify myself? And when I am not glorified, I get annoyed. You see, I want to be respected as a God, like a man who said that uh, God even called him uh, master. <laughs> uh, one Kenyan prophet, so hallelujah. So what I was saying, that Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And his faith in God was what motivated whatever he did that made God to count him righteous. It, that is faith in God that made him righteous, not the things that he did. Because if he did it to be righteous, he is entitled to that reward. Our righteousness before God is not an entitlement, it is a gift. For those who have the gift of righteousness, we reign in life through Christ. Hallelujah. So, it is our faith that is counted for us as righteousness because it is the bedrock of the things that we do. When you come to the nation of Israel, you see that they were given law by Moses. And the Lord told them in Deuteronomy 6.25, And it shall be righteous for us if we are careful to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us. You see, Moses said, if we do all these commandments, if we do all these good things that I have listed in this law, then it will be counted for you as righteousness. But look at what, say, what the Bible says in Romans 10 verse 5. He said, for Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does this commandment shall receive life because of that. But what is the thing? The Bible says, they draw to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their heart is far from me. Their fear of me is based on commandments taught by men. They fear God, as it were. They reverence God as it were, but not from their heart. Their love for God is selfish. Their obedience, as it were, is selfish. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and shall do all that he command you this day, 
He will bless your coming out and coming in. He will bless your better, you butter your bread and sugar your tea. Deuteronomy chapter 28. You will see a lot of this. If thou shalt follow the law, these are the things that you will get. If you don't follow it, you will be cursed. So I may not believe in God. I may not really trust him. I may not really have my heart may not be on him. But I want to do all those things so that I can get the reward. You see, and that is why God says, They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Israel as a nation, therefore, was said to have followed their own righteousness and by that despised what God has called righteousness. Moses should have known better. Moses was not collected or received by God because he did what was right. Moses acted by faith. Moses acted by faith. By faith, he left the house of Pharaoh, not fearing what the wrath of the king, because he saw that which was invisible. But when Moses established a nation, he felt that he needed to put them in a law so that they can make God happy by law. He related with God by faith, but he made the people to live with God by their own efforts. And that is why they began to perish. Did you observe that all the time the children of Israel left Egypt by faith in God's word that God was taking them to the promised land? They were so happy and they were moving by that faith. Once they got to the Mount of Sinai, where Moses climbed and got the law for them, from that point, in fact, the first thing they enjoyed from Moses coming down from the mountain is slaughter. They were, <laughs> many of them, over thousands of them were killed that day the Lord arrived. The first day the law arrived, death began. Because the wages of sin is death. And if the sin is breaking of law, you are breaking the law, and so you will die. But before then, none of them died. Even when they murmured against God, when they didn't get water to drink and other things, they, didn't, they murmured, they did other things. But God didn't count it to them as unrighteousness as it were, because of their faith of going to the promised land. But when they began to see things done so that they can get God's pleasure, God showed them that you cannot please me like that. Nobody pleases me. Righteousness actually is about pleasing God. And the only way we can please God is to believe Him. The Bible says that people who will perish, who will be destroyed, the Bible says it is because they have refused to believe. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set them free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is the external law. What the law of righteousness is faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so having said that, they did not follow God by what God said. Romans chapter 9, verse 31 to 32, Paul stating said, But that Israel, who pursued the law that would lead to righteousness, did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. They tried to do the right thing, but not by faith. They were trying to do it so that that thing will be used as a basis for their righteousness. He said, but if, but they did it based on works. In Romans 10, 3, Paul said, for being ignorant of the righteousness of God, for being ignorant of the righteousness of God, and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to God's own righteousness. So what is God's own righteousness? A righteousness that is by faith. Hallelujah. I want you to understand this thing clearly. I am not righteous because I did the right things. I am righteous because I believe God. And through God, I do the right things. Those right things are not what make God to say I am righteous. It is my faith that made God count me righteous. I am righteous because I believe in what he wants me to believe. They ask Jesus, what is the work that God wants us to do so that he can count us righteous? He said the only work God wants you to do is to believe in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Once you have believed in Jesus Christ, not as your religious founder, not as your prophet, not as your religious leader, but as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, as the gift of God that brings righteousness to mankind, as the root, the, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and the one through whom God accepts us as righteous, 
until you believe that you are still unrighteous. If you like, be a nice man, give money to the church, give pay tight, offering, everything. All those things, you will get the reward. Yes, you get the reward here on earth. People will appreciate you. People will like you. They will give you doctorate degree. They will give you chief tassy title. They will give you posts in the church. They can even make you an elder. They can even ordain you as one of the associate pastors. You know, these days, uh, uh, one of the ranks they give to people who are donating very well in church is even pastor. They can even ordain you as a pastor because of the donations you are giving in church. But that does not make you righteous. You are still doomed to eternal destruction because you have not received that passport unto life. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have a blessing life. Many Christians find it difficult to accept. I can just believe in Jesus Christ, it can't be life. I remember a young man was asking another young man who says he's a child of God, and said, What makes you to say you're a child? Because I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that through his blood, his precious blood, I have been redeemed and I'm righteous before God. I have believed in what he has done for me. That's why I'm righteous. He said, Ah, I, 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 I hope you believe that even if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you don't do good works, uh, you, are, you, are still, you are still good to go to hell. If, even if you believe in Jesus Christ, believing in Jesus Christ does not guarantee. That is what most Christians are preaching, which is wrong. It is my faith in Jesus Christ that gives me eternal life. The heaven you are talking about is eternal life. You make, make heaven, you make heaven. Making heaven means having eternal life. Not going to hell it means destruction, eternal destruction. Let us not put it in a different way. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever what, believeth in him should not perish. That is hell. Should not perish, but have eternal life. That is heaven. Have eternal life. I write to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life. So it is the faith you have that brings you that eternal life. What if somebody believes in Jesus Christ now? And dies. He didn't do anything. No good, no bad, as we like to say it. He's on his deathbed, and the gospel was brought to him, and he believed in Jesus Christ. Once after he's saying, Amen, he died. You think he will go to hell because he has not done anything? His faith in Jesus at that moment is his salvation. It is not what he will do after. It is not the, yeah, there is reward for works, but that reward is not is because. You have done something. That's a reward. Eternal life, going to heaven as it were, eternal life is not a reward. It's a gift. For the wages of sin is death. That is hell. But the gift of God is eternal life. That is heaven. Heaven is eternal life. Hell is death. The word hell actually means the place of the dead. And heaven as, as it were is the place of eternal life. Once you have believed in Jesus Christ and have eternal life, you are in heaven. And that's why we are, we are saved by faith. Faith means I am in this thing, even though in the physical realm, people have not seen me in it yet. We have not entered into the physical heaven as it were, but by faith in Jesus Christ, we have made heaven. I'm not trying to make heaven. I am already in heaven because my faith in Jesus has put me there. Somebody said the, the, the good works a person does when he's alive is what determines where you go. When you die, you wait until the day of judgment. And what it means where you go is your faith in Jesus Christ. The thief on the cross had no time to do anything good, two of us. But he believed in Jesus Christ and was promised eternal life. Hallelujah. So now you see that it is not your works that counts. It is your faith that counts. So as a believer, you are righteous. Hallelujah. You are righteous not because... You are morally right, which is good, according to any moral code, but because you have your faith put in Christ Jesus and you have abandoned any other way and solely depending on Jesus Christ, what he has done for you. And to be counted righteous before God based on your confidence in what Jesus Christ has done. Hallelujah. I'll give you an example. I, I wrote an exam to, to do a program in a university. And then, I, I, did I write an exam? No, no, no. I didn't write an exam. I applied to do a program in a university. And then, uh, 
they published the list of those that have been admitted. I didn't go to check. Somebody called me and said, oh, list have been published. I said, okay, I will go and check tomorrow. So I went that next day to check and I didn't see my name. My name was not published. I went back home believing that they didn't offer me any admission. A friend of mine visited and told me, oh, have you gone to check your name on the board? I said, yes, I've checked my name. My name is not there. He said, no, your name is there. I said, no, my name is not there. He said, your name is there. I know. I have seen your name. Your name is there. Now, I have not seen my name. I went back there. I carefully looked at all the names one by one, and I didn't find my name. So I went back to him. I said, I didn't find my name. He said, no, your name is there. So what do I do? It's only those who have seen their names that have the permission to come in to see the administrative officer and to pass through the admission, admission process. So I decided to do one thing. I said, I'm going to trust my friend. I'm going to trust what he told me. Not because I have seen it, but because he has seen it. Hallelujah. Now, God has brought us righteousness in Christ Jesus. And so I believe I am righteous, not because I have done the right thing, but because Christ said I am righteous. I have believed in him. He said, he who knew no sin was made sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. So I went to process my admission, not because I saw my name, but because my friend says he saw my name. So by faith in what my friend said he had done, or we had seen, I have gone to the admission officer. When I got there, the admission officer looked at me and said, have you seen your name on the board? Is your name on the board? Now, if I say, my name is not on the board, she will ask me to leave the office immediately because I'm not qualified to come before her. But I answered based on what my friend said. Now, you say, did I lie? I didn't lie. My lie would have been that if I say, I didn't see my name, that is right, but it is evil for me. But my faith in what my friend said is what I'm talking. I'm no longer talking as me. I'm talking as my friend. I'm using my friend's eyes to see my name. I'm not using my own eyes to see my name. In other words, in righteousness, I am righteous because I inherited righteousness in Christ. Not because I think I have done what is right. I am righteous not because I, have, I think I am good. I have not done anything bad. So based on that, I am righteous. No. I am saying I am righteous because Christ is righteous. Because I have inherited his righteousness. It is an inheritance. When your father builds a house and your father dies, you inherit his house. You don't say, this is my father's house. You say, this is my house. Get out of my property. Come and use my property. If, I, if somebody comes to rent that place, your father is not the landlord. It is you because your father is gone and you are the one who owns it. The same way, I am righteous, not because I have worked for the righteousness, but because I inherited the righteousness that was worked for by Christ. Just like you are not a sinner because you sin, you inherited the status of sins of sinners of, of being a sinner because you are born by a sinner, Adam. So I went there, the woman asked me, did you see your name on the board? I told her, yes, I saw my name on the board. But did I see my name on the board? No. Now, I was operating spiritually in that office. I was not operating like a mere man. I am using my friend's eye. I am not the one sitting in front of her. I, it's my friend that is sitting there. So have my friend seen my name on the board? Yes. Did I see my name on the board? No. If I go by my own righteousness, I will lose that admission. So I went with my friend's righteousness and I said, I saw my name. And so she opened her personal file and saw my name. Hallelujah. Many people have counted themselves to be bound to hell, not knowing that their names are written in the book of life. Because they are counting. They are counting themselves based on what they have done. They don't know that their names are in the book of life because of what Christ has done that they have inherited through faith. But we say those who will inherit salvation. We inherit salvation. In the book of Titus chapter 3 verse 5 to 7, he said, He saved us not because of the righteous works we have done, but according to his mercy through the washing of the new birth 
and renewal of the Holy Spirit. He poured out His Spirit in, on, abundantly on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been declared righteous, having been declared righteous by His grace, we may become what? Heirs with the hope of eternal life. That word heir means we may become qualified to inherit eternal life. So when she opened the book, she saw my name and she laughed and said, truly, are you sure you really saw your name on the board? I said, yes, I saw my name and said, okay, um, your name actually was on the board, but we removed it because we didn't see one file, one document that we asked you to bring. So it wasn't in your file, so we have to remove the name. I said, I have the document here. And she collected it from me and stamped, go and pay your school fees. If I had not gone by faith, I would have lost that admission. Many people didn't go by faith, and so they lost it. I went by faith, and I got it. What if my friend was not there to do that for me? So I would have lost eternal life if Jesus Christ had not come. It is the coming of Jesus Christ that brought eternal life, both to those who look forward to his coming and to those of us who look back to his coming and to those who lived at his coming. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Verse 21, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God in him. So I am righteous because I am in Christ. You may look at me and judge me that I have certain things I have done are not right. And based on that, you think that I will miss heaven. Without knowing that I am already in heaven because I have righteousness of Christ in me. Because I have eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is heaven. Heaven is eternal life. Eternal life is heaven. Hell is eternal damnation. Eternal damnation is hell. Death. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever does not believe in him shall perish. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have what? Eternal life. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth, on, believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed. Because he has not believed. Because he has not believed. Not because he has not done what they say is right and wrong. But because he has not believed. So being a philanthropist does not grant you eternal life. That's not righteousness before God. It is your own righteousness. It's good, but it does not grant you eternal life. Hallelujah. If you have a degree in theology... It's a degree in theology, wonderful degree. And you go to work in a company where they look for a degree in education. They will not admit, yes, you have a degree in theology, wonderful degree, you, you graduated fine with, with wonderful CGP. But that qualification does not qualify you to be a teacher. I remember some years ago, one of my boys came to me and he told me, oh, I want, uh, he studied theology, health certificate and diploma in theology. So he came to me, he said he wants to go and work as a teacher. Things are a little bit difficult, I know. He wants to have something doing. So he can I get me a place to work? I said, okay, I can get to a school where you can teach. Uh, at least you can teach them CROK, Christian Religious Knowledge, since you did theology. And he said, okay, that would be nice. I would be grateful. So I went to the principal of the school, who is like a friend. I said, please, can you help me employ this young man? He has a certificate and diploma in theology. Uh, at least he can teach uh, CRUK in your school. And the lady looked at his document and she said, thank God for his certificate in theology. Thank God for his diploma in theology. But what we need is certificate and diploma in education. He is a theologian. Let him go to church and do his theology. It's not in the school you come to do theology. <laughs> that was how the young man was not given the position to work as a teacher in the school. Hallelujah. As I am now, I, I, I have my, my, my theological qualification, but I also have my secular qualification. So if I go to any school to teach, I do not bring my theological certificate because I want to teach in a school. I bring my educational certificate that I'm a qualified teacher, certified by the government to teach. Certified by my educational institution to teach. Licensed to teach. But that my educational profession does not qualify me to be a pastor. I cannot because I have a degree in education whether it's master's, PhD, whatever I have in education, does not qualify me to be a preacher in the church. But it qualifies me to be a teacher. 
Are, are you understanding me? Now, my certificates or degree, whatever in theology, qualifies me to practice theology as it were. That is the human aspect of Now, what as in real sense, it is only of faith in Jesus Christ and God's calling that qualifies you to preach. Are you take note of that. Certificates is just to boost your knowledge. Hallelujah. So that young man was not given that uh, uh, privilege because even though he is qualified in theology, he's not qualified to be a school teacher. The same way, you might be qualified in your own standard by the good works you have done. Wonderful good works you have done. But that does not qualify you for eternal life. You need more than that. Remember a man who met Jesus Christ and asked him, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus Christ said, oh, keep all the commandments. He was just trying to test him. He said, oh, all the commandments, which one? He mentioned them. He said, all these things I have been doing since I was a child. And he told him, oh, one thing thou lackest. Hallelujah. There's one thing you will do, however, to have eternal life. Irrespective of all these other things you think you have done. Depend on me 100%, not on whatever you have. And the man says, It's impossible. If the things I've done is not quality, no, I don't want your eternal life. There are many people who call themselves Christians because they think that they are reading the Bible and they are following all the rules and regulations they find in the Bible. And based on that, they call themselves Christians. You are not a Christian, you are a Christian. You may say, oh, I have a position in the church, I, uh, I am a deacon, I am an usher, I am a pastor, I do things in the church, I come to church every day, I read my Bible three times a day, I pray, I give tithe, I do everything that they say Christians should do. And based on that, you are looking forward to have eternal life. You will be surprised you will not have it. Because that is not the qualifier. You have degree in theology, but you don't have degree in education. <laughs> So it does not qualify you. The only thing that qualifies you for eternal life is your faith in Jesus Christ. Every act you do later on is motivated by God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 to 18. He said, But now, Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been made near by the blood of Jesus. For through him we have access through one spirit unto the Father. Hallelujah. Only through him. We have access. He said, For it is he that worketh in us to will and to do his good pleasure. It is he that determines, that moves us. Jesus Christ fasted. Why did he fast? Moved by the Spirit. He didn't declare fasting. Jesus Christ prayed. Moved by the Spirit. Jesus Christ went to the wilderness. Moved by the Spirit. Everything Jesus Christ did was by the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit and your works will be what accepted by God. Because they are not canal. You will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. But when you begin to walk by human flesh, you will struggle. You cannot do by grace, by, by strength. What can only be done by grace. So your righteousness as a child of God is because of your faith in Christ Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. Every other thing you do as a result of that has a reward. Praise God for that. But it is your faith in Christ Jesus that makes you a righteous man. Even if you have not done any of those things and you die. The Bible talks about a man called Colossians. Uh, Colossians. That's the Colossians. Colenius. <laughs> Colenius. Now, Colenius was a righteous man as far as the law was concerned. Just like Elizabeth and uh, uh, Zachariah were righteous according to the law. But they were not righteous by faith. That was why he disbelieved God and entered to dumbness until God did his work. Mary was accepted and blessed because she believed. He said, blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that were believed. Hallelujah. Once God speaks, once God reveals his word and you accept it, it makes God happy. But if you are not believing what God said and you are trying to do... A, a wife who does not believe in her husband but does everything to make her husband happy, how husband will still not be happy? Look at her because there is a faith she, he wants from her that she is not giving. But she's trying to do every other thing. Those things mean nothing. The same thing to a husband. If, you, if that faith relationship with your wife is not there, no matter how nice you try your be, your, your wife will still not see you as a good husband. 
because the faith that brought her to marry you is not what you are working upon. Praise the Lord. So Cornelius was a good man. Do you know those things? God said, oh, you are, there's a reward for you. I have seen your good works. Your, your, the, the kind things you are doing, I have seen it. But I don't want you to miss it because all these things you see miss it. Go and see Peter. He will tell you what you must do. What you must do. What you must do. And when he went to Peter, he was, the gospel was preached to him and he became born again. In other words, he was now made righteous by God through his faith. Not because of the good works he has done. Praise God for the good works. Praise God for your tithes. Praise God for your offerings. Praise God for the cathedrals you have built. Praise God for the uh, 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 borehole you have put for the people to, to eat. Praise God for all the good things that you have done that made people to say you are a righteous man. Don't, I don't care. This man is a good man. In the eyes of men, you are righteous. And they will reward you for that, but not with God. Not with God. You see? My friend, close your mouth. This man is a righteous man. If you no go heaven, who go go? This man, this man, ah, he did have home. Why do you say he did have home? Ah, he did have home because he paid our school fees. He built our cathedral for us. Our village cathedral went way before. He built them. I was taught our school. I him go up. You see this robot they ride every day. Make them buy time money. All the youths in this community, he gave them job. All the widows, he put them on salary. He pays them salary every month. He don't, oh, this man, if you know go heaven, who go go heaven? If you know go heaven, who go go heaven? <laughs> he will go to your own heaven, the one you have prepared for him. The only thing that will take him to eternal life is his faith in Christ Jesus. What shall he profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? How do I lose my soul? By not putting my faith in Christ Jesus. You may say, no sense. I'm a Muslim. I'm an atheist. I'm a that. You can be anything you want to be. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the only way to be born again is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not born again because I changed my behavior. I can change my behavior. I used to act like this before. Now, I have changed my behavior. So that I, you change some of the behavior you think are good. What of other ones? What of other secret ones? You see two politicians that are quarreling and they're shaking their hands. Oh, the two of them have a concern, but behind their back, there is weapon. Let me greet you and finish public and I'll kill him behind. Huh? What is their motivation? Your change of behavior is good, it's nice, we like it, but it is we that will reward you. It is we that will appreciate you, but it does not give you a place in God's kingdom. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the of God. Want to be righteous? Want to be counted as a righteous man? Then you must do it the right way. And the only way is to have faith in the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. But God commanded his love towards us. In that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. The love of God for us is demonstrated only in Christ Jesus. Some people say, Jesus, you love me too much. You. Too much. You. Too much. You. Excess love. Oh, my sister, how did Jesus love you? Ah, you know here, my daughter don't mind. Bomb picking. <laughs> Jesus loved me. <laughs> I don't buy a car. Build house. <laughs> if I don't know Jesus loved each other love. Look at what Jesus Christ said. When I thought that he has done so much, oh, Jesus did it again. Oh, he did it for me. He has done it for me. Uh, uh, what that song again? Uh, uh, uh. What I've been waiting for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. What I've been waiting for has come. The marriage you have been waiting for, the land you have been waiting for, the car you have been waiting for, the child you have been waiting for. God is good. He has done me well, oh my soul. Rise up. That is what you call the love of God. Yeah, they are good. God has done it for you. Hallelujah. But those things are not the measure of God's love. For God so loved the world and he didn't give car. He gave his son. Your salvation is the demonstration of God's love. Every other thing you claim that God did for you because you love you. Even wicked people have it. Eh? There are wicked men that have houses. 
wicked souls that have children, wicked souls that have plenty of money, people who kill people every day, and yet they have every good thing of life. So if that is a show of God's love, you say that God loved them. Haven't you seen so-called righteous people, people that are good people that are suffering? They don't even see food to eat. So God hate them. Uh, 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 God love me, oh God love me, God love you. And that is why he gave his only begotten son. That is the only way you can reciprocate his love for him. You don't reciprocate God's love by tithe and offering and all that. Look, those things are your obligations as a child of God. They are not what you do to get God's pleasure. They are what you must do because it's your responsibility as a child of God. You must support the work of God. It is compulsory because that is what gets you reward on earth, but not eternal reward in heaven, as it, as it were. When I say eternal reward in heaven, I mean eternal life. Praise the Lord. Because I know there are many, many sinners, many, many unbelievers in Christ Jesus who are doing the right things that we call right things, but they have refused to receive Jesus. They reject Jesus. You are a pastor. You are, I, I, this politician, I'm going to pray for them. That governor, I'm praying for him. That president, presidents call me. Presidents call me. I pray for presidents. How many of those presidents have received Jesus? None. You pray for them to win election. You pray for them to buy cars. You pray for them to have money. You pray for them, they, their enemies leave them alone. You pray for them for every other thing. But you have not led them to Christ. Your prayer and your work is useless. You are not a pastor. Your, your worry should be, my friend, you must be born again. Jesus looked at Nicodemus in his eyes. He was a rich man. He was every, you must be born again. I believe Jesus looked at Joseph of Arimathea, who was a very wealthy man. I said, you must be born again. And these men got born again. They were not just politicians who they pray for, Jesus Christ pray for. They got born again. Look at Matthew. Matthew was a, 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 a tax collector, the chairman of the, of the Israel Revenue Authority. He made money. Yet, you must be born again. What did he do? He left everything and followed Jesus. In other words, he started depending on Jesus and not on those things. Why are you looking for me as a pastor? So that I can be praying for you. So that all your family... Uh, some, some people come in some time ago and say they want me to be their family pastor. Family pastor, they mean by I should be giving them prayers. I'll be giving them prayers. You don't want to be born again, but you need prayers. Pastor, be praying for me. Oh, I need prayers. I need your prayers. You don't need my prayers. You need to be born again. When you get born again, you don't need prayers because you have now come into the same status that I have that makes you to seek me for prayers. <laughs> the, same, my, the same God as my father becomes your father. All I have to do now is to teach you to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, not to give you prayers. Yes, we pray for ourselves as believers, but if you are not in that family of faith, my prayer for you makes no meaning before God. Yes, you can, God can answer your prayer, you have all those things, but... So when you are saying, Jesus, he loved me too much, oh, let it be because you have believed in Jesus Christ, you are saved. When you, when, when you are saying, uh, what I've been waiting for has come to pass, see what the Lord, what the Lord has done that you'll be testifying is the salvation of your soul, primarily. How many times do you go today, you hear testimony? Praise the Lord, I came to testify that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I am also very happy. I am very happy when people come to our ministry and they tell me, I thought I was born again, but after listening to your teaching, I realized I was not born again. I give my life to Jesus. I have seen many people. A, a, a young man came to Bible school and he said he, he wanted to be a pastor so that he can finish Bible school and get to then. And in the process of the teaching, he realized he was not born again. And I preached the gospel to him. He gave his life to Christ and I baptized him. And later he grew to become a pastor. Praise the Lord. So what I wanted to say this morning, your righteousness is being in right standing with God. Sin is the barrier between man and God. Jesus paid the price to remove the barrier by him, by himself. Whoever believes in him is declared righteous by God. So now when, whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, you have faith in Jesus, in the finished work of salvation, he has made you righteous before God. And by God, in Christ, you can now do wonderful things because you are now being motivated from the standpoint of righteousness, irrespective of whether you are a Jew or you are a Gentile, whether you have moral code or religious code. What happens now is that my righteousness is worked out because of my faith 
And the things I do are not what make me righteous, but I do things because I am righteous. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word this morning. And we trust that everyone who have listened to us are blessed by this understanding. As they go back to listen, many who have thought that they are righteous because of their works, or that they have eternal life because of their works, have been to realize today that it is faith in Jesus that makes them righteous. And on that standpoint, they now do what people call righteous things. I pray that this teaching this morning will bring life transformation to as many who believe this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I believe you have been blessed by this teaching this morning. If you have any question, you are free to send your questions and we will gladly answer. You need our teaching materials, we will always send to you. If you just make a request, that one free of charge, we will send it to you for you to study for yourself. You can listen to the audios, the tech videos, everything. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, listen and share with other people and let them be blessed as well. Whatever you are this morning, I want you to bring out your fellowship offering. World Congress is a discipleship communion and I want us to be part of this communion whatever offering you have whether you have a fellowship offering, thanksgiving this is first Sunday of the, of the month you want to give thanks to God through our ministry no problem, you can send it you have a tithe to give, you want to vow to be giving us your tithe to support the work of the ministry, God bless you we will accept it to the glory of God if you have done that, follow the number that is given there and send it across and we will acknowledge it Father, accept our offering we give to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cast his eyes upon you and be favorable unto you. May you experience his shalom even as you walk into this new month. May this month, may your eyes be open to receive and understand God's word and live by the glory that he sheds on your way in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for anyone that is sick. The Lord heals you in Jesus' name. Anyone in any form of oppression, you receive your deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. I command every oppression of the devil to be removed. I destroy every work of the devil in your life, starting with your spirit of not being born again and your mind that is corrupted. 